Thank you very much for this opportunity. First of all, uh, my name is Leonce Dikumana, and I'm a professor of economics at the University of Massachusetts Amherst. I also run a program on African development policy. Uh, my work uh, involves uh, an analysis of capital flight from uh, African countries, the issues of external borrowing. I'm also interested in, uh, in issues of uh, development financing, uh, resource mo domestic resource mobilization and financial inclusion and others. Um, yeah. So when we talk about foreign direct investment, uh, and I'm going to use the case of African countries, we're talking about uh, investment capital money that's coming from other countries into African economies to be invested in, in, in companies, in projects where the foreign investor takes part of ownership of a company or a project. So they contribute to the investment in the country. There are also investments that are going the other way. So you can have a South African company or person investing in Mozambique. It's going to be called a foreign direct investment also. But those those are typically very uh, those are typically recorded in the in the government statistics. And they, because the government wants to track how much money is coming into country, which sectors they are in, they are being invested in. And also movement up, uh, abroad. If a, if, a, if a Kenyan company wants to invest in South Africa or uh, Mauritius, they will have to declare the, the investments with the central bank, with, the, with, 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 with which whichever ministry is in charge of, of uh, regulation of, of uh, the foreign foreign uh, capital account. Uh, so those would be visible in the in the country's statistics. The phenomenon of capital flight is different. The phenomenon of capital flight is involves money that leaves the country without being recorded in the government statistics. And that takes various forms, which uh, we will probably get into, but I can already mention the, uh, the forms that, that uh, through which uh, capital flight takes place is where, for example, uh, uh, companies manipulate their import-export transactions and for example, a company is importing goods from the rest of the world. They will need foreign exchange from the central bank, but they will inflate the, the amount of money that these imports will cost. So if the imports cost, say, 10 million, they will, they will present papers that show that the imports cost 15 million, which means that they will be able to secure 15, 5 million difference which you can use either hold abroad or uh, use for their own transaction, not declared to, to the central bank. In which case, there will be five million that have, have really left the country without being ex explained. Um, the, 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 the falsification could also happen on the export side where a company is exporting goods to the rest of the world. And if the export have value of uh, exports uh, or that have a value of say 50 million, they will say that they only sold the goods for 40 million, which means that they will only declare to the to the central bank 40 million, and the rest will stay abroad. So that's a very common way of uh, way in, through which money leaks out of the the continent without being recorded. But of course, you'll have uh, 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 cases where money is simply taken in cash, in, in briefcases, uh, and, and, and deposited in foreign accounts without being de declared to, to the government. And unfortunately, and this could be the case, this, this could, could involve money that a private citizen has re obtained, uh, earned, but for some reason don't want to declare to the, to the government that they are shipping it abroad so they don't pay interest, uh, uh, taxes on interest, or don't have to explain how they got the money in which case the money leaks out of the country underground. Um, it could also be situations where it's official money, it's government money that's being stolen by people who are in charge of managing uh, the, the government resources. Examples include when governments borrow money 
to finance projects. And the managers of the project uh, basically take a, a fraction of the money uh, and that ends up leaving the country in briefcases in all, all kinds of uh, uh, obscure ways of transferring the money abroad. In, in, and this is the, this is this has a this particular example has a, a severe effect on the country. If the government borrowed money to build a road for a, for 100 million, and 10 million is taken out of the budget, what happens? It means that the road will be will not be as efficiently constructed as as it was supposed to be. That's when you end up with roads that that start crumbling after two years. I live, in, I live in the U.S., roads are built for 15 years. In many African countries, after two years, you start having potholes. In some cases, even not even less than two years, because the builders put a, thi a, a, a thinner layer of the macadam because, they, because the money was stolen. Um, so that's a, that's, an, that's a case where the country is losing twice, in the sense that 10 million is, is gone from the government uh, resources and the country ends up with a really, really bad road. So that's a very serious uh, concern for in terms of the impact of capital flight on African economies. So an example is actually good to, as I said, uh, following to, uh, up to my discussion about the case where money that is borrowed by the, the government is stolen by people who are in charge of, of uh, managing the, the, the resources. So let me start by saying that it is part of normal practice that governments will borrow money from abroad to finance development projects. Even developing, developed countries do, governments do borrow. For example, from the market, from the from private from the private sector, so it's okay for a, a, an African government to go out and borrow money from lenders abroad to finance a road, a school, and so on. The problem is that, and, and then the, the country is going to pay back the loan. The problem is that when the loan is not used for the for the purpose it was designed for, and it's stolen, the country still has to pay the loan. So what we mean, what we call odious debt, is the, the loans that are borrowed by countries, but that do not contribute to development, that are, do not benefit the citizens of the country, either because the roads are not built, uh, the schools are not built, and yet the country has to pay back the loan. It's odious in the sense that it did not fulfill the purpose that it was contracted for, it's also obvious in the sense it, when the lenders actually know the purpose of the loan, but they also should know how the loan is being used. So in practice, when lenders give money to African countries, there is an agreement between the government and the, law, and the lender about what the money is for. It's say a road. There is also a process in which the lender monitors the use of the loan. Throughout the construction of the loan, uh, of the road, there are teams of the lenders which will come and, and examine the way the, 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 road, the project is going. And then at the end, they'll come back and see whether the road has been built. So in a sense, if a, if a government borrowed money to build a school and there's no school that's built, the, 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 the lender is also responsible because they should have seen that there is no school that has been built. So. In this case, the problem is that you have a government that goes out and borrow money for the sake of financing development, and some or all the money ends up being stolen and financing private uh, consumption or financing arms that are going to kill people, which is another case. The government borrows money and it's going to buy weapons and it's going to kill its own citizen. Uh, that's, a, that's the most egregious case of odious debts. Uh, in this case, the burden of, of borrowing still falls on the population, even years to go to come, when, whereas they do not benefit in terms of development financing. That's what we mean by odious debts.
So uh, in, in our book on um, Africa's odious debt, we profile a case of uh, the former uh, president of the Congo, which used to be called Zaire, now it's called the Democratic Republic of Congo, who uh, was called Mobutu. In the case of Mobutu, he is somebody who had a very good access to, to, to lenders because of political reasons. He, he, he ruled during the period which is referred to as a Cold War period, where he was seen as a strategic ally for the West in terms of combating the expansion of, of communism in Africa. So he was given access to loans freely, uh, easily, and he used those loans to enrich himself. Many times money would simply go from the central bank to his private accounts abroad. He would buy, build um, uh, mansions which don't benefit benefit the, 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 the country. In, but at the same time, the loans have to be paid back. In this case, it's obvious in the sense that the lenders knew, in the case of Mobutu, we profile a case where um, reports were filed to international institutions documenting how the money is disappearing from the central bank. Yet, Mobutu kept receiving loans. In this case, it's an example where the lenders are also accomplice to the odious debt uh, machinery. So that's an example where, the, again, the people of the Congo have to repay the loans, and uh, in the, in the, uh, at the same time, they, don't get, they didn't get the benefits. Yeah, so, so the issue of odious debt and capital flight generally um, is an, uh, has severe implication on, on social development. It has a huge human cost. In our book, again, the book on, of Africa, on Africa's odious debt, I would encourage people to read it. We document the fact that when governments are spending revenue to pay for the loans which were stolen, by government, by past government uh, leaders. That is money that is not being used to build schools. That is money that's not being used to, to build clinics. So, in fact, every dollar that is used to service debts that were stolen by government rulers implies less uh, medical care, less education, so less students are going to go to school, and it means that progress in service delivery is hampered by odious debts. So in terms of capital flight uh, itself, every dollar that leaves the country means that resources for investment in infrastructure, uh, roads, resources for investment in schools are being drained. So capital flight is a heavy drain on government resources. So our latest estimation, for example, shows that the, up to 2015, the accumulated amount of, of, uh, of capital flight exceeds 1.3 trillion, okay? That's almost the same as the size of, of, the, uh, of the economies of sub-Saharan Africa. That shows you the magnitude of the resources that have left the country. Now, if you could assume that these monies were invested in the country, that means the, the, government, the African countries will have higher levels of domestic investment, they will have better roads, they will have better schools. So it's a severe drain on, on resources. And one other implication that we draw is that inequality. So you can imagine that people have access to, to government coffers who can steal the, mo the money from the government. People who have wealth to hide and go, go stash abroad, these are among the elite, the political elite. So they are the ones who are benefiting from these resources, which means that the gap between the rich and the poor keeps increasing because the poor not only get, don't have that money, but also the services that they were hoping for to come from the government are not there. So the rich, they get richer. The rich can, can source their medical services even abroad. 
because you, you can see what's, what's most frustrating is that many times the same government officials who are mis, mis, embezzling government revenue, which would have financed schools and, 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 and medic, medical uh, services, are going abroad to get treatment, are sending their kids abroad for, the, for education. So in that sense, they don't, they're not affected by the poor quality of, of public services. It's really unfair.